Oh, nobody knew what Tai Chi Chuan was. Yet today, this ancient Chinese art is being practiced by many people all over the city, in parks, schools, and in storefronts. Commonly called Tai Chi, it is a form of practical exercise which is practiced for health, happiness, and longevity, and secondarily for self-defense. Our next guest is Gary Kleiman of the Freedom Academy of Tai Chi Chuan in Chicago. He will explain the temple style of Tai Chi as well as demonstrate its effectiveness. As Gary will show us, Tai Chi can be practiced by anyone at any time, at any age, without special equipment and independent of season or climate. Gary, welcome to Common Ground. Thank you. Uh, first of all, give us the history of Tai Chi. What is it? Tai Chi is an internal exercise practiced many years ago. It came out possibly. See, there's, ver there's very many... Interpretations of what it is. That's right. right. Okay, so, but it's a, it's a Chinese art form? Yes, it's Chinese. An exercise. I remember when uh, uh, President Nixon went to China, we saw whole groups of uh, old people who were, who were practicing Tai Chi out in the park. And uh, these were people who said that they, uh, they lived a long time because of this. And I think that was probably when it became, it started to become popular in America. Right. Why did you become involved in it? Well, I got originally into another martial art, which I spent about two years, and I found out that that wasn't exactly what I should be practicing. Okay. Did you get involved uh, for self-defense reasons? or? Yes, and, and also, since I've been involved in Tai Chi, I've lost about 60 pounds. You've lost weight? Yes. Well, you can lose weight. Well, now that will <laughs> make a lot of people happy to know. You can lose weight doing it how? How does this exercise make you lose weight? Okay, by practicing Tai Chi, it enables the body to reach a natural balance. So by practicing, you're able to release tension, help cope with daily stress, open stiff joints, and just everything in general will become more natural. But, I mean, does that affect your diet in any way? Well, it, it also can be put in. You can also alter your diet, but that's not necessarily with every person. I mean, how did you lose weight? Well, I, by practicing and being conscious, more conscious of what I was eating. Uh -huh. So I changed my habits somewhat, but basically the practice will do it quite a bit. I have beginning students who've only been with me a few months, and some of them have already made comments about how much looser they are, how much better they feel. Some of them have lost weight. I have one woman who's lost about 30 pounds. Is meditation a part of this? Yes. Tai Chi, there's a couple different kinds of meditation. The first kind is the movement itself, okay? By practicing Tai Chi, what you're able to do, like I mentioned before, is open the joints and relax the muscles, calm the mind. But also, after you've gone through learning the form, which we will show one of the tapes that we have, shows individual forms, a simulated classroom. But when I say the form, I mean the long form, which is each individual form put together in a string. Okay, now we do have a tape um, which you, uh, in which you do a demonstration for us. Uh, the first of all, you called it sensitivity training, I think. Right. Now explain to us what you're doing here. It looks like a dance almost. Okay, it's really not a dance. What we're doing here is two people who practice Tai Chi already are practicing pushing hands, which is the sensitivity training in Tai Chi. Now, is there tension in this pushing? No, there's or... no tension here whatsoever. What we're doing is we're practicing yielding. Okay, when I say sensitivity, when one person pushes in, as you can see there, the other person has to neutralize completely without allowing any tension to be created inside the body so that when one person pushes in, all of it is transferred down to the ground. Now, if you notice, the waist here is turning. The waist in Tai Chi is probably the most important part of the body. Although, when you practice Tai Chi, no part should move independent of the rest. As you can see here, these are my students and myself practicing pushing hands. Okay, now, this, how can this help you with self-defense? Okay, what pushing hands is for is giving you a new way of responding to an aggressive movement. So the first thing that you want to do from practicing pushing hands is be able to detect motion before it's too late. 
So you, what you're saying here is to anticipate how That's the person right. is going to move. And understand so that you can respond there. Now we're doing what's called rolling hands. By practicing rolling hands, now you're able to insert each form that you've been practicing in the long form into a more practical application between two people. And there's still, I must stress that there is no tension created here. As you can see, we're sticking to each other. There is no pressure at all, about two ounces. Depending on the speed, depending on the comparison between people, every single time two people do pushing hands or rolling hands, it's different. It is not prearranged at all. Okay, so this is... Now, who is taking the lead on this? There is no leader. We are corresponding and cooperating with each other completely. This is complete communication. And silent. That's right. Now, by practicing Tai Chi, you'll see here that our joints seem to be a bit unusual. Both of us here have been practicing Tai Chi about seven years. Okay? As we practice, we have to make sure that the heels are connected to the ground. You see here that not just our hand is moving. Everything is moving. Now we're slowing it down. Okay, we're still keeping basically the same pressure. So it doesn't matter how fast we go. So by practicing this type of rolling hands, which I called it before, now when somebody comes in at you in a, app in a real application, you have something called natural human response, which just clicks right in and there it is. Okay, well, that doesn't, it just doesn't look violent. I mean, it just well, doesn't look violent. like it, it, it could be applied in a self-defense way. Okay. So explain that to me. By practicing these things, first of all, a lot of, a lot of people do not understand that when you do pushing hands and you practice for the applications, it's not like practicing karate where one person punches and the other blocks. Punch, block, punch, block. You don't have to do that, okay? By learning this type of system, this particular system, what happens is you're developing something that like I mentioned before, natural human response. So you're able to respond without having any tension involved at all. So I mentioned also the yielding principle. That's why we're doing pushing hands. So when somebody is coming in at you, all you do is you make a space for them to fit and then you change the situation before the other person realizes that anything has changed. So you try to take control of everything. Now when two people are equals in Tai Chi, this can go on forever. Like what you were showing us. That's right. right. Okay, but now if I was doing that with somebody who was tense or normal, or even somebody normally who, aggressive right? or normally tense uh -huh. okay we practice a long time to become that relaxed that we can just move every part of our body connected like that mm -hmm. most people cannot do that what they will do is they'll move one part of their body okay by practicing tai chi you develop sensitivity to be able to know where they are going to be they only have a certain amount of possibilities mm -hmm. okay by practicing tai chi you also practice very slowly which that was not slow because we were showing variety, okay? By practicing in this way, you're able to anticipate what's happening before it's finished.